Good morning, Second. Uh, we are continuing our study of the uh, book Believe, and uh, you'll see that uh, here, our book Believe, and we are in chapter number 29. And uh, we have one more to go, and uh, that topic is called self-control. But this one that we are in right now is uh, gentleness. And you can find those on our website, on the Facebook page, and uh, via email. You can email the church, and, um, and also the church emails those lesson outlines as, out as well. Um, we continue to uh, research and, and go through our study on uh, gentleness. And let your gentleness be evident to all. And I like to say just let that be something that's evident. Let it be unmistakable that you, uh, you let your gentleness be known to all. And as I was studying that, that lesson outline, I came across these seven habits of highly gentle people. You know the book, Stephen Covey, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Well, these are seven habits of highly, uh, highly uh, gentle people. There's nothing that shows your strength better than gentleness. I'll just go through two points on that. Just kind of whet your appetite to, to come on out and participate in Sunday school. Uh, be conscious of your feelings. So again, let your gentleness be evident, you know, to those, uh, to others. So we want to always be conscious of our feelings. And pretending will not make it disappear, won't happen, all right? It, it will just uh, push those feelings beneath the surface. The next one is uh, use the space between the stimulus and response. I like that one because I used to tell boys uh, that I mentor, you know, just take a pause, think, act, feel, you know, kind of thing. And that's what we're, we're after here. It's just to take a pause, that space between uh, what caused the reaction and your response. Um, gentle people aren't reactionary. Uh, they don't respond immediately, and they uh, stop to take a, a basically a, a metaphorically step back. And so that's what we want to do as being gentle people, all right, for Christ. To allow that, that Holy Spirit to just work in us when we encounter something or we, we encounter someone that's, uh, that's a problem. And so we just want to be able to take a step back. So we invite you out for the uh, Sunday School at 9.30 on Sunday, and uh, hope you will continue to join us uh, at that hour for Sunday School. Thank you. Well, good morning, Second. Um, we are still in Chapter 29 on the uh, Chapter on Gentleness, and we are in Part 4, and this will be um, uh, that lesson for, for January 3rd. Uh, you will... Uh, can go to the church's um, uh, Facebook or on the church's, um, or, or the secretary will send it to you, the uh, outline for the lesson. So, um, so get those and uh, we will go forward um, in our lesson. All right. Our, we will begin with prayer. Father God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for another day. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, oh God. We just thank you, Lord, for this lesson, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that this will help us to grow closer to you and, and especially, Lord, how we treat others uh, in, in, in life. Lord, we just give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Our key idea is coming uh, in the book is, uh, I am thoughtful, considerate, and calm in my dealings with others. Uh, the key verse is coming from, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. That's coming from Philippians 4 and 5. And this, this part right here begins on page 5 at the uh, title there called uh, Gentleness Towards Others. Our lesson proverb was coming from, be careful who you shun today. They may be your only source of hope tomorrow. That's a Tony Payne quote. And uh, I, I really like that uh, proverb right there. And uh, 
because we really do have to be careful how we treat others and, uh, and, and not burn bridges. Um, gentleness towards others. One of the realities of life is that no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent and a part of the main. This is a poem from John Doney. And uh, something that I found uh, from uh, his work is John Doney declares that no man is an island and that as we face a global pandemic and global environment crisis and global um, political polarization, uh, that we need to um, hear those words like never before. And that it's easy to uh, respond to external threats and labeling and blaming and all those kinds of things. You know, we got liberals, you got conservatives, you got greenies, and you got this whole us and them type of thing going on, but in reality it is that the reality is that many of the challenges that we face uh, right now cannot be fixed by defeating a group of people, but rather by realizing that we're all in the same boat. And that's one thing that I like um, with that is that humanity is one body and the Bible is real clear on that, that we are all the body of Christ and that no man is an island. Martin Luther King said it this way, we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied to a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one indirectly affects the other indirectly. Which also reminded me of the song, you know, by uh, Kirk Franklin and Hezekiah Walker. They sing, and y'all know the song, you know, I need you to survive. We sing it here at our church during greetings at times. And some of the lyrics go like this, you know, I need you, you need me. And, and it is his will that every need be supplied. This song really centers on the idea that humans have a profound responsibility to each other. The singers play, um, plead with each other that I won't harm you with words from my mouth. They promise to pray for each other. I love you and I need you to survive. I need you to survive, not because of what uh, you can do uh, or give me, but because you matter. You matter, period. And that each of us, uh, because no man is an island, God wants us to help each other and show love to one another. You know, 2020 has been a really challenging year as we um, talk about Donate's Peace and that we really do uh, need to stay connected uh, with everything and stay connected with each other. Um, which is why I like, you know, our, our motto in our church, you know, that we uh, connect people to Christ and to each other. Um, as Christians, we are demanded and expected to be gentle towards uh, others. And this demand makes Christians different. I want to read this in the Amplified Version just to amplify some of the things that uh, uh, I read in this verse in Matthew 5, 43 through 8, 48. And it reads, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor, your fellow man, and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love, that is, unselfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may show yourself so that you may show yourselves to be the children of your father who is in heaven for he makes his son to rise on those who are evil and those who are good and makes the rain fall on the righteous and those who are morally upright and the unrighteous or the unrepentant, those who oppose him. For if you love only those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do that? And if you greet only your brother, wishing them God's blessings and peace, what more than others are you doing? Do not even the Gentiles, who do not know the Lord, do that. Uh, you, therefore, you therefore will be perfect, 
growing in spiritual maturity, both in mind and in character, actively integrating godly values into your daily lives as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Amen. I just really thank the God for that, uh, that reading because Christ, you know, establishes the principles and that is different than the worldview. And we are expected to be gentle towards others who are not always like that to us. You know, I believe that acting in gentleness is an act of, act of uh, uh, rebellion. Now, why do I, what do I mean? All right, act of rebellion, we have to often reject the status quo because being gentle stands counter to the expectations of a quick-tempered, uh, blame-fueled uh, culture where we want to take our frustrations out by criticizing others or shirking responsibilities and fearing and fighting one another and any way of life that, doesn't, that, that we don't understand and subscribe to. This demand sends a message to the world. The church should be the voice and the message messenger that sends the message of faith, forgiveness, and righteousness to the world. And the church cannot afford for the world to shape our values and our message. You know, as seen in scripture, the body, is, the body of Christ is not called to live like the world. Another king uh, quote came from his letter from the uh, Birmingham jail, and it goes like this. And he's really admonishing the church. He says, there was a time when the church was very powerful in the time when the early Christians rejoiced at being deemed worthy to suffer for what they believed. In those days, the church was not merely a thermometer that recorded the ideas and principles of popular opinion and that it was the thermostat that transformed the mores of society. You know, just like in Revelation, John wrote, uh, to the churches of uh, Laodicea and uh, Sardis. He says, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. It would that you would either be uh, cold or hot. So, because you were lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, I need nothing nor realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. And, and something that I wanted to say there, you know, that Rivers is a, is a quote from uh, uh, Paul Fran Pope Francis. He said, rivers do not drink their own water. Trees do not drink their own fruit. The sun does not shine on itself and flowers do not spread their fragrance for themselves. Living for others is a rule of nature. We are all born to help each other. No matter, what, no matter how difficult it is, life is good when you are happy, but much better when others are happy because of you. So to have that kind of mindset, you know, uh, you know, that, you know, hey, I'm rich, I'm prosper, you know, I have need of nothing, and, and not realizing that you are wretched, you're poor, pitiable, and blind, and naked. You know, John the Baptist lost his life because he would not compromise his message. And it says here in Mark uh, 6, 16, 18 through 19, 22, 25, and, and 27, it says... But when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him, and would have killed him, but she could not. And when the daughters of the and when the daughters of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. 
verse 25. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charge of the head of John the Baptist. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded him uh, his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in prison. You know, John could have easily saved himself. But John's conviction and his commitment meant more than compromise. You know, the church, I just, just say to the church, church, uh, don't compromise your conviction. Live what you believe. That's what this book is about, believe. And it is about thinking, acting, and being like Jesus. Don't just give God lip service saying yes with your mouth and saying no in your heart. Um, in your heart and in your actions. You know, Romans 12 says, Romans 12 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are to be transformers, not conformers. Growing in gentleness and meekness. It's easy to find fault and be condemning of others when they are wrong. But as believers, we are exhorted to be gentle, even in correcting. You know, when my daughters were young, you know, they used to love to play this, uh, you know, squeeze your hand uh, game. And they would just squeeze my hand as hard as they could, uh, trying to make it hurt. And they could squeeze all with all their might, but it, it would never hurt. She didn't need to be gentle because she lacked the power to cause me any pain. I'll read that part again. She didn't need to be gentle because she lacked the power to cause me any pain. And then just for fun, you know, I would squeeze their hand uh, tightly uh, until they would yelp. And it's the strong hand that, it's the strong hand, not the weak one, that must learn to be gentle. It's the strong hand, not the weak one, that must learn to be gentle. Gentleness is translated as meekness, which should definitely not be confused with weakness. Instead, meekness is a quality of having uh, controlled strength. The part A, growing in gentleness and meekness, it's spiritual. It's a spiritual mark of maturity. In Galatians, it says, Galatians 6, 1 through 2, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one. In the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, we should always aim to restore a person, like bring them back into fellowship, and reconcile with persons, and making things right. And I've tried to do that uh, on several occasions here, and uh, sometimes I'm, I'm successful and sometimes I'm not. But uh, at least I try to restore and reconcile and make things right with uh, people. But I don't treat them any other kind of way. I try to exemplify Christ, you know, in all that I do and say. Receive persons in forgiveness and be welcoming. Receive persons in forgiveness and be welcoming. The part B of growing in gentleness and meekness is a significant aspect of ministry. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and, and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. This is not something that we can just discuss. We need to demonstrate this. The Bible says, learn from me. Let your gentleness be evident. Let, let it be obvious, unmistakable, and clear to all. The Lord is near. True gentleness demands something on our part. 
That's intention. By this, I mean being intentionally kind, intentionally compassionate, intentionally humble towards others, especially when they are facing struggles or difficulties. You know, Jesus did not dismiss Thomas' doubts when he heard what he said. He came back. And in John 20, chapter 20, verses 24 through 26, he said, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I see his hand, the hand, except I shall see in his hands the print of nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. And I um, want to get down to uh, part C here. It says, Paul apparently had uh, developed and grown into a deeper uh, maturity because in the one, in the verses above or in the part above where Paul and John Mark had issues, Paul had learned later that um, uh, uh, Mark's that Mark's uh, that his ministry was profitable to him and then the growth you know because he separated from them he went another way uh, uh, Mark he John Mark went another way on the journey and just kind of quit and so now uh, Paul had grew in in his in grown in his uh and his maturity towards Christ. Now uh, he uh, desired him to be a part of that ministry. And in the growth of us as believers, we should be able uh, to be gentle towards others, willing to work on ourselves and our own misgivings, and be open to allow the Spirit to do something in us. Um, my time is up, and... Uh, I thank you for yours, and hopefully you got something out of this lesson that will help you uh, think, act, and be more like Jesus. Father God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for this lesson. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for another expression of your goodness. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that, Lord, that the body of Christ um, in this world is not called to be like the world. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for your strength, Lord. We thank you for your spirit, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that's in us, Lord, to help us, Lord, to be gentle, to exercise those fruit of the spirit, Lord, in our lives and demonstrate it to others. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to again encourage you to uh, study with us. And out of the Believe edition, we are talking about gentleness. And a closing prayer, dear Lord, we thank you for allowing us to study your word. We hope that something is said and done that will reflect gentleness with us. We ask these things again in your son Jesus' name. Amen.